to the interview with Richard Lady Beard. Ah, Lady Beard all day! Mother is here, I love you, the video, I am Lady Beard, thank you for having me! Alright! Yeah. Alright! It is an interview. All right. So everybody can start your questions. Okay. Uh, my first question: Can you give a brief, uh, brief inter- introduction to our viewers who have uh, who have yet to be embraced by your greatness? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> you're so kind. I like this man. You're a, you're a good man. Fantastic. Malaysia, lovely to meet you. My name is Lady Beard. I am from Australia, but I live in Japan, where I am a pro wrestler, heavy metal singer, idol, and Genki presenter. Yoroshiko Negaishimasu. Okay, um, how long have you been living in Japan? I've been in Japan two years. Almost two years. October will be two years. Okay. Mm. So um, I'm still new. I'm still off the boat. Because <laughs> <laughs> I came on a boat. Okay. It was actually an inflatable boat. It took 17 months! <laughs> Have you seen the boat in the, in the hall? I've not seen the boat in the there hall. There's a boat in the hall? There's a boat in the hall with some balls. <laughs> what? <laughs> what do you mean? You should just go. There's one boat that uh, somebody did an uh, 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 inflatable boat with some balls you can sit down and pay for. It. Really? Yeah, you can just sit for 20 minutes. Well, if there's one thing I want in my boats, it's balls. <laughs> a ballless boat! <laughs> A ballless boat will never float. That's what we say in my country. Okay. I look forward to seeing the boat. We got boats, there's bikes, there's all kinds of things. There's a car. There's a car. There's a car. You can this is this is like a um like an auto show. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Right. Uh, also have girls. Well, a girl. That's right. <laughs> the, um, the the racing girls. Fantastic. This is wonderful. You guys have brought the party. Thank you very much. I'm appreciative. <laughs> all right. Next. Okay. Um, so you've been living in Japan for two years. That's right. Um, have you been picking up uh, the language? How easy it is to learn the language? Um, it's uh, that's actually an interesting question. Japanese generally is not as hard as some of the other Asian languages. So, for instance, Cantonese was a nightmare to learn. Right? <laughs> Absolutely. Let's see, go on, Let's see, go on. <laughs> yeah, so Cantonese is a nightmare, right? Because in Cantonese, it's, you know, there's no grammar to speak of, but the pronunciation is just a nightmare, right? So Japanese is the opposite. The pronunciation is very straightforward, but the grammar's all over the place. And things, there's all like politeness forms and things vary so much. Um, but I mean, you like, like any other language, if you uh, just get there and you have no choice but to talk it, and learn it, then you'll pick it up fast. Mm. Right. Sorry, just for the next question, I'm sorry. Do you want me looking down this lens or looking at you? Look to everybody. Uh, okay, no worries. Yeah, it's fine. No worries. Okay. Next, please. Okay. Um, you have actually a lot of experiences in going to Comic Cat as a, as a cosplayer as well. A Comic Cat? Uh, Comic Cat, Comic Market in Japan. Oh, that's right, uh, yes. How, how was your, your experience in, the, in your first Comic Cat? Um, it was great. You know, it's so I went. My very first one, actually, I wasn't cosplaying at. My very first one, I went as a guest, to, as you know, as a patron to when I've been in Japan for about two weeks. So I went, and of course, it's massive, like it's epically huge. So you walk around and you're yeah. just just bewildered by the whole yep. thing. Um, and then, of course, you know, the quality of cosplay is so high that that's very striking as well. Um, the first time I cosplayed there, the, the unique thing about cosplaying at a convention, especially a convention like Comic Cat, where people are only there to take photos, like there's, you know, a thousands of people come with their huge, like, long lens camera things, and all they want to do is take photos, <laughs> is... When you're in the studio taking photos, you know, you pose or whatever, and you pose a snap, 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 and then you stop, and you check the frame, and you go, okay, I want to change this a little bit, and you go back and you do it again. But when you're posing in Comic Cat, it's just, you pose, and you pose until you can't pose anymore. <laughs> and then you go, God, okay, all right, then you switch to another pose, and it's just the whole time, there's just a flux of cameras. So people take photos for a while, they say thank you very much, and they leave, and then someone fills in their place straight away. So this year, <laughs> we did Chun Li. <laughs> I, d- I didn't realize beforehand, but of course, it was like two hours straight of Kung Fu. It was, it was two hours of like this, and like this, and all this kind of stuff, right? So by the end of it, you can, you can see like, 
The photos that were taken later in the day, I'm just covered in sweat all over here, right? It's brutally hot and everything. And then we came home and I couldn't move anything, like my wrists and ankles, everything. Were kind of, uh, so I lay down and I fell asleep at like 7 p.m. It was a good time. But that's actually the most striking thing about Comey Head in that, um, like, the photos just never stop, never stop. And of course, uh, I feel that when you're cosplaying, the most important thing is um, rather than thinking of yourself as a model, mm -hmm. I think you should think of yourself as, as, a, as a performer. So you don't want to break the performance, you know, you want to yeah. keep moving the whole time. Um, and you want to try and stay in character as much as you can. It sometimes gets impossible because you need to drink and, yeah. yeah. But, um, so, uh, so it's very challenging. I recommend it because it's, uh, it'll build, it'll improve character work very, very quickly. Um, but that is the most interesting thing about working at Comic Con. Okay. Um, how long have you been keeping your bed, and how do you groom it? Ah! <laughs> um, I made the uh, terrible mistake around five years ago of shaving my beard. And um, obviously it was a very sad period of time in my life. It uh, <laughs> was a... Uh, it was quite horrible. Um, I don't want to go into too much detail because I might cry. But um, you know, I, I think the most important thing about beard maintenance, of course, is a healthy diet and exercise because that will cultivate proper health and enable correct <laughs> hair grow and so forth. But it's also important to meditate on your beard growth, I feel. I think meditation at least three times a week on a, uh, uh, the, the, the foundation of a healthy beard is a crucial, and I can see, sir, you clearly have uh, gone through your meditation with out slackness and I salute you for that it's um there's an element of zen involved in maintaining the perfect beard and uh, and it's a uh, it's a religious movement which shall be spearheaded by the beards of the future next question advice for anyone that doesn't that can't really grow a beard no nah, no nah. <laughs> Now this is interesting. So, okay, so there is a, a very famous band from my hometown in Australia, and their name is The Beards. And <laughs> every single song is about uh, beards and having a beard and uh, the glory of beards. So I'd like to quote one of their songs uh, right now to answer that question. No beard, no good. There's not enough beards in my neighborhood. And you say that you can't. But I know that you could. <laughs> You've got no beard and you're no good. <laughs> Credit to the beards. That's not my song. Credit to the beards. Okay, I have a question. You moved from uh, Hong Kong. That's right. To Japan. That's right. What made, what made you move? Uh, that's an interesting question. So, um, the Lady Beard project in its current form began in Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. And so I was in Hong Kong wrestling and doing my Kawaii Core show. Mm -hmm. And after every show, um, people come up to me and they always had the same two comments. As always, firstly, I've never seen anything like that before. Mm -hmm. And then secondly, the Japanese would love you. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, right? So I'm like, oh, all right. So I organized my own tour in 2011, my own Japan tour. And I went to Japan and I did uh, six shows. I did, what, three in Tokyo, mm -hmm. one in Osaka, two in Okinawa. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and they were right. The locals loved it. They loved it. So um, I got such a positive response. And also I really liked Japan uh, that I decided I would move over there. The other thing was Hong Kong, like my career in Hong Kong had kind of done as much as it could do. So it was sort of, I had to move on somewhere. Okay. Um, but I really liked Japan and I decided that it was the place for me. Okay, um, have you ever thought that this gimmick will, be, will, will catch on really, uh, quite as, as is it right now? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, how does it start? Um, you, you wearing cute dresses? <laughs> it's the, the whole thing started when I was 14 years old. And it's funny because now I'm only five years old. So it's, it's strange how a five-year-old can have had the experiences of a 14-year-old. It's strange like that. But so when I was 14 years old, I went to a um, school uniform party that a friend of mine hosted. And so everyone turned up wearing their normal school uniforms they wore every day. Um, I hated my school uniform because I had to wear it every day. It was the last thing I wanted to do on the weekend, right? Yeah. So, so I thought it'll be hilarious if I put on my big sister's school dress. So I did, and I turned up at this party. 
And my friends are like, oh, you wearing a dress? Oh! And so it was this hilarious night and everyone had a really good time. And so it began from there. Um, what inspired you to do this? To start dating you? Well, it's just awesome, really. <laughs> um, uh, the whole thing is, it's really been um, my whole life experience up till now coming together to create the Lady Beard of today. Um, I think the biggest, the biggest kind of clicking point would have been when I was 14 when I started cross-dressing because that got me into it and it made me realize how much fun it is and also um, how... I mean, clearly, unless you have some kind of beard substitution, which could, maybe you could like pin these over like this, and that could work as your beard substitution. It does hinder speech somewhat, as you can tell, however. Yeah, I do that sometimes. Yeah? You can eat ice cream at the time. Oh, it'll be messy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it'll be messy. Uh, can you tell us about your group? Sure. Lady baby, it it's awesome. It is awesome. It's uh, it's <laughs> how, how, why, and when. Uh, so it was end of last year. Um, so I was on the cover of a magazine in Tokyo, and the CEO of this company, Clearstone, which is a costume like a Halloween costume manufacturer, mm -hmm. he was getting off a plane, mm -hmm. and he saw the magazine with me on it, and he took the magazine and he said, "Who is that?" He took the magazine, took it back to his office, and showed it to his staff. And actually, I'd worked with his staff a few months earlier on another event. But they say, yeah, that's Lady Beard. He's this wrestling, dancing foreigner. And the CEO always say, get him in, get him in, get him in. We're going to have a meeting with him. Get him in. So we go in for a meeting with, um, with Mr. Ono. And he's like, I think you're awesome, and I want to do something with you. And we said, okay, great. And he said, yeah, don't know what yet. I said, okay. I said, is that okay? So we'll get back to you. We said, all right. <laughs> so, so we left that meeting. Uh, a few weeks later, we got called into another meeting. And he gives us the photos of these two teenage Japanese girls. Mm -hmm. And he said, that's Ray and that's Ria. And I'm going to put you in a pop group with them. <laughs> said, oh. <laughs> all right. I said, yeah, it's going to, it's going to, they're going to like be cute and, well, you're going to be cute, but they're going to like sing really cute and you're going to scream and you're all going to dance and it's going to be amazing. And I said, okay. But what was, what was funny was at the time, my Japanese was kind of still on its way to getting there, right? Yeah. So we'd have these meetings and I'm looking at these photos of these girls and thinking, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> So it was hilarious. But full credit to Mr. Ono. He is the genius behind the whole thing. Um, so we put it together, uh, did our first shows, shot the video. And obviously the video has suddenly exploded. That was beyond everyone's expectations. Um, the plan and the hope was that Lady Baby would kind of get popular within Japan. And it would be a means by which Clearstone could promote and push their costumes. Uh, and then the global response was massive. And, but the global response, like the, the outside Japan response was bigger than the in Japan response. Um, so it's now, it's, it really was, like the video happened and we had, you know, three million views in three days or something. Oh, no. And I remember then I saw the staff and I was like, well, this is awesome, isn't it? And they're like, yeah, what do we do now? <laughs> it, was, it was totally unexpected, right? No one had any idea it was going to happen. So... That was a wonderful blessing in disguise. Mm. And, um, yeah, so now I've taken it to the world. Uh, the first album is already out, right? Uh, the first single is out. The first single is out. That's when, right. the first album. Album. when is the first album out? That's a great question <laughs> that Lady Beard can't answer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, speaking of the Lady Baby, uh, would they, uh, what, what was their reaction when first meeting you? Were, were they surprised <laughs> to be working with a five year old? Uh, they certainly were, you know, it's, um, yeah, they're 14 and 17, so for them, they're far more mature than I am, so they have to, you know, <laughs> deal with me in a different way. Um, no, I remember when we first met them, we were kind of, we came into the room and they're there and I'm there and everyone's managers there and we're all like, oh, I'm just going to go to mask. We were very polite and everything. And uh, so we're going around the circle explaining who everyone is. So it's like, this is Ray, she's a uh, junior idol and she won this and this. And this is Rhea, she's a junior idol and she's a very good dancer. And so we watch their videos. I'm like, oh, great. No, I'm very kawaii, very good job. So I think it's to me, it says, this is Lady Beard. He's a cross-dressing pro wrestler, heavy metal singer. And uh, <laughs> here's a video of him. So <laughs> they showed the girl 
Girl was a video of me singing Valentine Kiss. <laughs> and on the metal drop, I remember they're both sitting there watching, and on the metal drop, drop they both go... <laughs> like this, right? <laughs> and they're like, what? <laughs> so, um, it was a hilarious moment for everyone. How did you first meet Sailor Fuku oji and how did you describe working with him? Ah, he's, he's, you know, he's so smart. He is amazingly smart. He's an engineer working in semiconductors. Who would have thunk, right? Um, uh, so, when we first put up our photos on the internet, um, they got retweeted a bunch of times, and that's kind of what initially made me famous. And so that happened, and then Sailor fukuoji san sent us a message saying, hey, do you want to do a photo shoot together? And so, Naoko came to me and said, this dude, Sailor fukuoji san wants to do a photo shoot. I said, okay, who's that? So she showed me his, showed me his photo, and I said, oh god, alright. So we went to Harajuku, both in our school um, uniforms, Took a bunch of photos, it was a great day, it was hilarious, everyone had a really fun time, and the photos got like mountains of retweets. So, he's wonderful to work with. Yeah, he has endless energy! Endless energy! Taking photos is, can be quite exhausting, at least I find it quite exhausting, right? Um, I don't know if I'm doing something wrong, but, but like taking photos for a long stretch of time, after two hours or so, it really is like, alright, just, okay, just give me a second here. <laughs> oji san will just go all day, relentlessly, relentlessly. <clears throat> he leaves the house in his Selifuku, and from the moment he steps out the door, people are wanting photos with him. And he'll, from like 8 a.m. through to midnight, he's just, just endless. Amazing, amazing. Mm. Um. Affect everyone around me and how much I could, um, you know, raise everyone's spirits and show everyone a very happy and fun time um, by wearing a dress. Uh, but then what happened was, when I was in Hong Kong, the first time I cross-dressed in Hong Kong, so the Chinese are very, very conservative, right? So in Australia, when you cross-dress, it's kind of, ah, it's a guy in a dress, ha ha ha, but it's not, like, it's not massive. In Hong Kong, the first time I put on a dress, they lost their minds. They were like, you are the funniest, craziest, most ridiculous person I've ever seen in my life! They went nuts, right? So it was kind of... That was, uh, I think, the time when I um, kind of consciously, uh, when Lady Bead consciously began. It had been, you know, coming for a long time, but that was kind of the switch over. Okay. It was after that that I created the name and everything. Yeah, is there any meaning of your hairs? Yeah, they're my antenna! They're my antenna. They help me read the weather, you see. Because when a, when a storm's coming, they do that. Yeah, right. So how was tonight's weather? Tonight's weather? Yes. Well, as you can see, it's uh, humid outside, so they are oh. hanging, <laughs> hanging politely. Right. Should snow start to fall, you'll see them start to twitch. <laughs> hmm. should, should, it, should it happen again? Right? Sorry? Sorry? What happened here? Though? It's snow. Snow. It won't happen well. <laughs> no, there is right. a place that has snow here, but it's artificial snow. Oh, is that right? Yeah. That's, that's nice, though. that's good yeah. fun. Do you enjoy a good ski on the artificial slopes? No, uh, that's not enough to make a small... That's not enough to make a small uh, snowman. It's oh, really? Ski. Oh, dear me. Uh, so. yeah, have, you, have you been to Japan? It snows in Japan yeah. at Christmas time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. we went to Fuyukomi. Oh, great! Ah! Oh, oh yeah, then, then I'll ask that question. Fuyukomi or Natsukomi? I actually haven't been to Fuyukomi, so I can't comment. Okay. Oh, okay. Mm. I've not been once. Uh, not from lack of wanting, mm -hmm. just because the schedule hasn't worked out. Okay. Mm. Okay, um, so how do you start into pro wrestling? Uh, so I was, so the reason I was in Hong Kong in the first place was I was an actor and a stuntman. So I moved to Hong Kong to do stunts in Hong Kong action movies. Um, and I'd always had an interest in pro wrestling, but in Adelaide, where I'm from, the dojos were all miles away, so I couldn't practically train. When I got to, got to Hong Kong, for the first time I actually had access to a dojo. Um, yeah, so I met this guy at a heavy metal show and he was wearing a Hong Kong Wrestling Federation t-shirt. And I said, what's that all about? And he said, yeah, I'm a wrestler. Do you want to come to training? So I did, and we went from there. Uh, which pro wrestlers inspire you most? That's a great question. I like the character wrestlers. So I like Eugene and Big Daddy V. Do you know these wrestlers? You know Big Daddy V, yeah? He was great, right? So good. So good. So I like the character wrestlers. Um, 
<laughs> come into the ring and have a, a silly fun time. That's a good. That's a good match to me. A silly fun time. Hmm. Um. So, which pro- wrestling promotion are you featured in currently? Uh, I currently wrestle for Union Pro Wrestling in Japan, which is part of the DDT Wrestling Group. Um, however, it got announced this week. I actually didn't know until the announcement. It got announced that the company is closing, oh, and I haven't. I don't know why. I haven't heard any details. Um, so the last show is in October. So after that, I don't know what's going to happen. Mm. So I wrestle for Union, but I'm also wrestling for Makai Pro Wrestling at the moment, which is um, a new wrestling company, which has started, which is the greatest thing you've ever seen in your life. Makai is, oh, it's like a wrestling theater, live music, live dance crossover show. It's the coolest thing you've ever seen. It's like the ghosts of dead samurais battling demons in hell. So it's like pro wrestling with like live heavy metal behind it. And then these girls come out with these huge wigs and start dancing and doing all this madness. And everyone's, all the wrestlers play, play different characters from their normal in-ring characters. So everyone's like some demonic samurai ghost dude. So I play this character, Louis Froyce, who was a 15th, sorry, 16th century Portuguese missionary in Japan who then got betrayed by his religion and uh, has spent uh, the past 800 years in hell and has just (laughs) entered the Makai realm. So mm, so it's exciting times. Exciting times. It's very exciting. I'm the first foreigner in Makai, so it makes me very very proud and happy. How new is this? It's very new. It's uh, this year only, I think. Maybe the end of last year they had their first show. Mm. So could you talk us through behind a day in a life... (laughs) Lady <laughs> um, sure. It's uh, well. There are two types of days in the life of Lady Beard. So there's the day when we have to go and do stuff. So for instance, today, um, which is a case of if it's an event, it's normally a case of get up, get organised, and the whole day I'm um, trying to kind of concentrate on the work at hand. Um, uh, so let's get up, get organized, go to the venue and do whatever preparations needed. Go backstage, get myself all sorted out, get my hair and my makeup and everything done. And uh, then kind of get into uh, focusing mode and try and stay in that mode as much as possible until the work's done and then go home. Uh, so that's, you know, that's, that's the work day. Then the other alternative is the preparation for the work day, uh, which is normally... It'll involve, yeah. It, it always involves training of some kind. Uh, language study of some kind is normally in there. Rehearsal of some kind is normally in there. Um, and then whatever running around and whatnot that I have to do that I have not been able to do on the work days. So that's pretty much the life of Lady Bid. Um, and then of course there are uh, shopping days when I go and try to uh, locate uh, the newest kawaii things that I possibly can. Uh, I like it when kawaii things come to me. I think that's a nice kind of um, organic kawaii development. <laughs> like if I'm, if I'm in the gym, for instance, say, and then some, like, like a, a young person comes in wearing, say, like a frilly tutu to uh, get on the treadmill, then that really is a blossoming of kawaii-ness in uh, the most organic of senses in my life. Which, uh, which I appreciate. <laughs> okay, speaking of that, um, is it easy to find uh, dresses in your size? Nah. <laughs> so, <laughs> we, get, we get all of them tailor-made. All of them. When I started in Hong Kong, I wasn't lifting weights yet. So at that time, I could find some. But it was horrible, because none of them were the really cute ones. I go into the stores, and I saw these really cute dresses that I wanted to wear. But they were made for, like, size 6 Chinese girls. So, <laughs> so... <laughs> Sometimes what I do is I'd, I'd buy them and I'd try and cut like certain bits so that I could so that I could get in. Didn't work. Didn't work at all. So so at that time all my dresses were uh, quite ugly and I didn't know how to fix the problem. But now everything just gets tailor made. So for instance, this was tailor made um, by a costume maker called Shiozaki san in Tokyo. Did an excellent job. Sorry, Shiozawa san. I'm sorry. I always. Call him Shiazaki san. Shiazawa san, I'm sorry, in Tokyo, who's an excellent seamstress? Seamster? Seam- seamstress. Seamstress. Well, he's a man. Seamstress. Clothes making man? Uh, <laughs> Taylor. Yeah, Taylor, thank you very much. Excellent one of them. Mm. Where do you get your inspiration for your clothes? Uh, is it a location, um, person, 
uh, type team? Lots of different things, actually. Um, a lot of them are, you know, I started in Hong Kong, and there were all these styles that I wanted to, to you know, to do to try on, and I couldn't access them. And when I moved to Japan and I met Tachibana-san, that's actually when I first managed to access all these styles. So Tachibana-san is Japan's foremost photographer of cross dresses. So that's how we met. And she runs a cross dresser specific photo studio. So she has this wardrobe of really cute clothes in men's sizes. So when I first met Tachibana-san, it meant that suddenly the scope for what I could work with opened up dramatically. Um, and that's where the first photos, like the maid and the Lolita and everything, that's where that first happened with Tachibana Sun. Who, by the way, I have to give full credit to without this woman, Lady Bill would do nothing at all. She, uh, she really is like the other half of, of the puzzle. Puzzle? Of the two halved puzzle. Yeah, you can't quite <laughs> If you split an egg down the middle, <laughs> one half would be Lady Beard and one half would be Touchy Bonathon. That's right. <laughs> yes. Question, guys? Okay, um, if given the chance, uh, mm. will you join a uh, larger promotion like uh, New Japan Pro Wrestling or Ring of Honor? I mean, I would love to. I don't know if I'm good enough, to be honest. I would really love to. Um, I've wrestled some of their guys before. I wrestled with some of the Ring of Honor guys in Australia at Zero One Australia, um, and like I've wrestled some of the Dragon Gate guys and whatnot. Uh, I would love the opportunity, but uh, you know we'll see if it actually happens or not. That being said, would you want to remain in Japan in the wrestling circuit in Japan, or would you actually also try to consider like, moving to stateside? I mean, we'll see what happens. Right now, I'm in Japan. Everything's going really well in Japan. I'm really enjoying it there. Um, we'll see what happens in the future. See if, depending on what kind of uh, opportunities open up. Yeah. Mm. Uh, how do you feel if someone cosplays or plays your character? I'll be so happy! <laughs> so happy! It hasn't happened yet. People keep saying it. But uh, no one's done it. Not that I've seen, anyway. <laughs> So, I'm so, oh, I'd be so happy. I'm getting a lot of like people in America saying that this Halloween they're going to cosplay Lady Beard. So, <laughs> pretty excited. Pretty grow the beard. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to call the union. <laughs> okay. Next question. Uh, how does your family feel about... <laughs> they think it's hilarious. Oh they think it's hilarious. Um, I'm from a very, very academic family. So all the men in my family are doctors and lawyers and things like this, right? So, uh, so you know, I'm the black sheep somewhat of the family. Um, but, you know, I, I really could not be luckier. My family's so supportive. Um, when I was you know, very young, my mum said to me, you go and do whatever is going to make you happy. What doesn't matter, whatever you want to do. Uh, so they've been incredibly supportive throughout the whole thing. And I very much acknowledge and appreciate how lucky I am to be in that situation because I think I am maybe 1% of the world's population who would have uh, a family supporting something like this. So, they're the best. Um, you say that your favourite wrestlers are the ones that have gimmicks. Mm. Um, if, if you would like to have a feud with someone, who would it be? Well, what a, I've never thought about that! What a great question! Whoa, what a great question. I've never thought about that, actually. I've never thought about that. Daniel Bryan would be a business beard. <laughs> <laughs> Daniel Bryan would be a good beard off, wouldn't it? That would be the uh, contest of the beards. I'm going to have to get back to you about that one because I want to think about it before I give a proper answer. That's a great question. Thank you! You just expanded my consciousness. You've challenged me. You've asked an interesting and challenging question. Going back to uh, Lady Baby. Yeah. Have you heard about uh, Baby Metal? Yeah, of course. I love them. Uh, are you going to do something with them? I can't really Have you... Sounds good to me! A collaboration of some sort? Have you, you met them? Baby Metal is going to be a Have you met them? I have not yet, no. Mm. No. Okay. Um, I'm mates with a dude who works in their company. And um, one of our contacts knows them and tells us he's going to introduce us. So, uh, yeah, but not yet, no. Okay. I'm very excited to do so. Love them. I think they're excellent. Mm. I think they're excellent. Then the next question is, why metal? For you? Yeah! <laughs> That's why metal. Um, I've always loved metal. 
since I was a teenager. <clears throat> and the thing I respond to in metal is the power of metal. Um, so I find a lot of metal heads are kind of about the musicianship. They're about the like the all that kind of stuff. For me, it's always been about the about the power of it. Um, and I think it was a case of, you know, when I was young, I got bullied a lot and whatnot, and so I felt powerless all the time. So metal was something that made me feel powerful. So that's why I responded to it. Mm. Um, How's the Japanese, uh, uh, the Japanese uh, exposure to metal? What do you think? Is it enough? Uh, yeah. Are, you, are you turning anything? Are you turning them into more metal or something? Um, that, hmm, that's interesting. I mean, <clears throat> metal already is very well established yes. in Japan. Yes, yes. Um, metal. And then along with metal, you know, punk and, you know, visual key mm-hmm. and uh, you know, all kinds of styles of rock and roll are very well established. Yeah. Um, so I'm not sure whether I'm exposing more people to metal as such, uh, but I would like to think that I'm making metal ac- more accessible for some people. Mm-hmm. Mm. But at the same time, in doing that, you know, the metalhead purists look down on that, so they don't want a bar of it, right? Yeah. Um, so, it's sort of, you know, you have this band of people, and, you know, it's hard to expand past that, because mm-hmm. these guys drop out once you, when you try and, you know, ex- expose to these guys, mm-hmm. and so on. Let's actually, let's ask Naoko. Naoko? Hi. Nihon ni, ano, Neri Biado no shigoto wa metal nihon ni, moto spread no kanji ata tomoimasu. Moto, like, nihon ji ni. Oh, aruto. Aruto. Oh, okay. So Naoko thinks we've been good for metal and pro wrestling in, um, in Japan. And we've, uh, we've spread the word. Spread the word. We're missionaries! <laughs> We're on a mission! <laughs> Spreading the good word of pro wrestling and metal. And beard. And beard. And beards! <laughs> <laughs> the most important things in life. And kawaii of course. They're the only things that matter. Uh, speaking of kawaii, mm. do you do your own makeup? I can, but Naoko's much better at it. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, she taught me how to do it properly. Before I met Naoko, I'm like, bah! you know. So she taught me how to do it properly. Um, so I can do it myself, but... It's a train wreck. It's if it's much better when touching on here. So you put on your makeup with your beard on. Magic. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, a beard actually has its own special brand of makeup, which pollinates from the pores of the skin when an external foundation comes into contact with the skin, you see. So at the same time as, as an external foundation meets the skin, the uh, beard internal foundation flourishes forth so the two can meet and harmonize into one foundationorific uh, beard experience. Okay, so hmm. now talk about beard. Do you ever think that you would like to grow your beard? Longer? <laughs> oh, um, I would love to. I had it really long before, and I could put little ponytails in it. <laughs> yeah. But the thing, like Oji-san does that, and I think it's awesome. Um, my beard is very strong, though. Like when it gets long, it's very strong. So it's actually quite dangerous because I hug the fans and it stabs them. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so that's one of the reasons. <laughs> that's one of the reasons I like to keep it kind of short and fluffy. <laughs> Safety first, it's always important. Right? Yep. Helpful in the ring, of course. Yes, yes. Very helpful in the ring. But uh, my fan's safety is my first priority. One question. If you were doing what you're doing now, like the Lady Beard Project hmm. um, and pro wrestling hmm. and such, where did you see your life? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I started life as it was so looking at you past the light. Move your head that way slightly for us. Thanks. Cool. <laughs> um, so I started life as an actor. And so uh, it's really through that that I came into all of this. Acting was my foundation for everything. Uh, And I think that's sort of uh, what has given me not a competitive advantage, but a certain uniqueness, both within, within stunts and within wrestling and within heavy metal, is that I come into everything as an actor. So I approach everything from the perspective of thought process and uh, you know an emotional development and all this kind of stuff um, which is different from the way that most you know wrestling stuntmen and whatnot do things uh, so you know I was an actor um, that's how it started I can't really 
see myself doing anything that's not performing. That's actually been a huge part of the motivation of what's gotten me here. In that, you know, it's been it's been it was 15 years of struggle to get here. Right, um, a lot of it very poverty filled and very very painful. Uh, but the thing was, I just really can't do anything else. Like I can perform. That's my only talent. Uh, and that's the only thing I can do without wanting to kill myself. Like when I had my teenage day jobs, I'd be there and I would just be climbing the walls going, when is this going to end? Like I just hated it so much. So if I weren't doing this, I'm sure I'd be performing in some other way or dead. Okay. <laughs> or hunting vampires in a parallel dimension. Because <laughs> mm. that's important work too. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're a wrestler. Obviously, to me, shit is... Really mm. important. Do you have a training menu? Um, mine changes all the time, actually. Mine changes all the time. Because I like to body shock a lot. My body seems to get used to things quickly. So I, I body shock a lot. But it's, you know, it's generally um, weights four, five, six times a week. Uh, cardio, you know, maybe three times a week or something. And then all the other bits of training, so pro wrestling and taekwondo and gymnastics and whatever else kind of fits in around that wherever it can go in the schedule. Um, but weights training is really, really important. I wish I'd realized that when I was younger. I wish I'd realized when I was doing martial arts how important weights are. They, they improve absolutely everything. So um, if I was going to give anyone advice, I'd say get on the weights because it'll improve everything else completely. Okay. Um, in, in, in your pro wrestling career, what's your finishing move and what's your favorite move? My finishing move is called Women's Liberation. And it is a uh, jumping spinning kick. It is Kofi Kingston does the same finisher and he calls it Trouble in Paradise. Oh. Same kick. That's right. Oh, you know, you're a wrestling fan. Yes. Hey! <laughs> Good stuff. Who's your favorite wrestler? Um, Triple H. Oh, you like Triple H? That's right. Why do you like Triple H? I don't know. There's something about him. Maybe it's the beard. I don't know. It's the beard. <laughs> it's the beard. <laughs> no beard, no life. That's exactly what it is. <laughs> He's got a nose that can kill as well. Yeah, sort of thing. Yeah, 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 that nose. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> um, sorry, I forgot the second half of the question. Uh, what's your favourite move? <laughs> my favourite move, this is uh, it's my secret weapon, as it were. I'm letting you in on, um, on a little bit of something right now. I could just use you to demonstrate. <laughs> Come and sit next to me. Okay. What will uh, often, happen, often happen in ring situations is, um, you know... Sometimes I'll be at the uh, I'll be at the losing end of a situation momentarily, and so he'll be holding me like this, thinking he's doing very well. And uh, what I like to do is I break out the arms, grab the head, and then pull the head into my breast. <laughs> Stunning my opponent to set up for my finish. Yes, I'm stunned. Thank you. Yeah, but- <laughs> You see, so much kawaiinus cannot be consumed by one man. No, 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 that's right. Uh, guys, we have uh, time for maybe one or two questions more. Um, outside of your uh, pro wrestling and music career, mm. are there any hobbies do you do? Any hobbies? That's interesting. Actually, all the stuff you see me doing at work, that will, that all of that stuff was my hobby. So I'm very lucky in that now I go to work and I do all the stuff that I love. Or stuff. My uh, my hobby for the longest time was martial arts training, but of course that's now work. So um, any particular martial arts? Uh, I the one I did longest was taekwondo, and that's probably the one that I still kind of feel the you know the most. It feels like my first love, you know. But I did taekwondo, kapoeda, muay thai, kali, ji kundo, wushu. I did some of the stuff. Yep. That explains the awesome chuli kick coming in. Sorry. <laughs> that explains the awesome chuli. Kick. Thank you very much, sir. Thank was, you very, very it, much. It was yeah. close to the real thing. Oh, ah, yeah. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you very much. Do you have much. any? Other characters you plan to cosplay? Yeah, for the next step. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do, but they're a secret. I can't, oh, okay. I can't tell you, can I? Okay. I'll okay. let the cat out of the bag. Okay. <laughs> I can tell you a fake one if you want, because that will bum steer you, and you'll be expecting something else. <laughs> okay. Good. Okay. Um, do you watch any animes? Yeah. And which one do you like? My favorite one is Bakano. Oh, you know Bacano? Oh, yeah. It's awesome, right? Yeah, it's awesome. It's so good! Okay, now, in, oh. in your opinion, would you prefer the English version or the Japanese version? Nah, this is very interesting because when I lived in Hong Kong, I was a professional voice dubber. 
So, we dubbed the English versions. <laughs> <laughs> so it's an interesting, it's an interesting question for me. Um, when I'm watching anime, it, well, it really depends on the quality of the dub. The Japanese artists are so good that, you know, a lot of the time the English artists miss the mark. Now, because I'm on the inside, I understand why that is. A lot of the time, they just don't have the time to develop, you know, develop the character and develop the voices properly, right? So, um... Uh, but I like, I kind of like both in different situations. Uh, did you see the, the Street Fighter 2 animated movie? Yes. yes. Did, well, you see, did you see the English and the Japanese versions? Yes. The English version was so much better than the Japanese version, right? Yeah, so it's, it, that doesn't happen very often. Um, but when it does, it's, you know... I was going to say it's magic, but it's not magic. It's just <laughs> not magic at all. It's <laughs> right. just yeah, a thing yeah. that happened. One last just, question. Yep. One last question is... Would you ever consider going into other than wrestling, like MMA? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, uh, I wanted to when I was younger. I wanted to when I was younger. Uh, I wanted to uh, fight Muay Thai, actually. Um, I, like, I did fight Taekwondo competition when I was very young. And then I wanted to fight in Muay Thai. Uh, then the reason I didn't was I was in acting school and, and I didn't want to destroy my face. I didn't want to have a, didn't want to end up with a nose like that, right? So I thought I'd better, better stay out of Muay Thai. Um, uh, now, not anymore. But in the past, I did very much have an interest in that. There's other stuff, though. Like, my interests of what I like to do have kind of developed and they've gone more from fighting more into performance so there's a lot of a lot more performance oriented things that I want to do but again I don't want to tell you what they are because it'll ruin the surprise for the future okay. Okay. right thank you everyone thank you very much guys good stuff thank you alright a, a, a foot off alright a fop